Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in the world. What can we do to reduce our risk of dying from this disease? This paper provides 10 tips. The main author is Professor Luigi Fontana, now at the University of Sydney in Australia. He is a world leading researcher who has been studying aging for over 20 years with a focus on lifestyle interventions, particularly nutrition, fasting, endurance exercise, mindfulness, and sleep. He is the author of the book, The Path to Longevity. We have previously interviewed Professor Fontana, where we talked through many of the topics. I've linked to the playlist above. Let's go through his list and see what he recommends. The first tip is to optimize body composition and muscle function. This is not only maintaining a good body weight, but also ensuring sufficient lean mass. A good diet and a mix of exercise will help control fat deposits and keep visceral fat down. We cover both exercise and diet later in the video. They say moderate calorie restriction, but I'm not clear what that is. To me, calorie restriction is eating less than required to maintain your current weight and activity. I think the key thing is to have a good muscle mass and a healthy fat percent and as little visceral fat as possible and to eat the amount of calories that allows you to maintain that. The authors recommend a plant-based Mediterranean diet. The first point is to avoid calorie dense and nutrient poor foods such as cakes and sodas. A key element of the recommended diet is that it's plant-based with fish and low fat dairy products. They recommend low saturated fats, which may help keep LDL down, and low branch chain and sulfur-based amino acids. Leucine is one of the branch chain amino acids, so this may reduce mTOR activation. However, these are also required for muscle synthesis. On the fat side, they do recommend omega-3 fatty acids and moderate amounts of olive oil. The diet should provide the required minerals, vitamins, and phytochemicals. Table one, referred to from the paper, provides some more details on the diet. Tip three is intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating. The authors seem to say that this is most relevant to individuals who are overweight, and certainly in the past, I have found it as the best way for me to reduce total calories consumed when I wanted to lose weight. Whether time-restricted feeding helps with longevity when the same number of calories are consumed, I think is still an open question. Tip four is to engage in exercise. Although it may not be the main regulator of fat storage, it does help with metabolic health, including glucose management and blood lipids. It's good to have a variety of exercises. I like to think about it along the lines of Dr. Peter Atiyah, where he sees exercise as a way of maintaining function as we age with a target of remaining able to perform certain activities when we reach 100, while accounting for the inevitable deterioration with age. This requires an all-round ability, including muscle mass and strength from resistance training, aerobic capability as measured by VO2 max, through HIIT and endurance training, flexibility and balance for movement and for protection against falls. As well as these exercises, I would add sport such as tennis, which requires reacting in response to unpredictable stimuli, which is good for coordination and training the control of movements in the brain. Even with exercise, it's still good to avoid sitting too long without moving and regular breaks to get up and move are suggested. Dr. Martin Gibala was recently on our channel and spoke about the value of exercise snacks, short bursts of exercise like running up a couple of flights of stairs taken during the day. Professor Fontana suggests no alcohol. I still think that the evidence for the negative impact of moderate alcohol is unclear. However, on the other side, I have noticed from my aura ring that my sleep quality is lower even if I have one drink in the evening. Tip six. Don't smoke. I don't really have much to say about this. I would guess very few people who smoke are watching this video. Though I did find this data point interesting, that just one cigarette a day has 50% of the risk of smoking 20 a day. Lack of sleep is a risk factor for heart disease, which has recently gained in visibility. Sleep quantity is not the only thing. Quality also matters.
As I mentioned earlier, I use an aura ring to track this. I think it's like your blood glucose. It can be out of optimal range for many years, and there is no visible effect. And just like it's worth getting your blood glucose checked, I think it's worth tracking your sleep. It's worth noting that bad sleep also affects the hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin, encouraging you to eat more. There is good advice here about getting into sleep mode and having good sleep hygiene. I am not great at these, but I do aim for seven hours sleep a night and a consistent and early bedtime. Tip eight is that chronic stress is bad for you. The example they give here is anger, but other forms of mental stress are the same. It's not just that the stress impacts your mental ability, but it creates hormonal changes leading to physical changes in your body, which have a negative impact over time. In the example here, being angry raises blood pressure, puts the immune system on alert, and increases inflammation, all things we want to avoid. For mindfulness and breathing, I use box breathing to help me remain calm. I also meditate daily, though mostly with the aim of improving my ability to focus rather than to reduce stress. Having good social connections is one of the themes that has been seen across many of the Blue Zones. And possibly this is one of the reasons why a sport like tennis, which involves social interactions, has been associated with longevity. Avoiding pollutants is their last tip, which is not always easy depending upon where you live. Keeping windows closed can help. A couple of things we do is we use an air purifier and also organic cleaning liquids and soaps and so on to try and avoid bringing in chemicals into the house. This graph comes from the paper and shows the interconnectedness of the pathways related to cardiovascular health and the key levers that we have to reduce the risk that we face. Interestingly, Dr. Peter Atia has said that CVD is one of the most avoidable of the main causes of death and that not smoking, maintaining good blood pressure, and controlling LDL, well, APOB, are what is required. These 10 tips for your lifestyle will help you with that. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you all well.